Time for another little video tutorial. This time I'll show you the benefits of focus stacking in landscape photography and how I use it. First, let's start with some background. Why do we need focus stacking? Well, when composing a landscape photo, we often try to include some interesting foreground to lead the viewer into the scene. And when we do this, we want to ensure it's in focus. And if not for artistic reasons, we want middle and background to be sharp as well. And for this, we need a large depth of field. Normally, this can be achieved by using smaller perches. But increasing the area of sharpness in an image that way comes at a price. Through an optical effect called diffraction, the overall sharpness decreases as the apertures get smaller. And the more megapixels a camera has, the more diffraction can become the limiting factor when it comes to image quality. As an example, let's look at this photo of Antibes, which I shot with the Canon 5 DSR. You can clearly see how using a smaller aperture on the right side reduced the details in the photo. So if I would shoot at such a small aperture, using a 50 megapixel camera would make no sense at all. For maximum quality, I try to stick to medium apertures instead. F9.5, for example, provides the best compromise between depth of field and sharpness for me. F11 is still sufficiently sharp and starting with F13, the sharpness is noticeably reduced. I think I could squeeze out even more details from the 5DSR by using F8 or F5.6. But the benefit isn't too much here and doesn't justify the additional effort for me. But I certainly encourage you to do your own tests with your camera lens combinations to find out where the sweet spot lies for you. So what does this mean? Since I can't use smaller apertures to increase the depth of field, what I will do instead is taking multiple photos where I vary the focus point to shift the area of sharpness throughout the frame. Let's jump into a little in the field video I recorded in Spain a few months ago. I want to show you now how I do focus stacking in the field. So the first thing I do, I focus to the front, which you see right here. I use the cable release, take a photo. Now next thing, I go a little bit more to this edge here and focus again. And I'm using back focus here which works nicely because I don't change the focus while I press the shutter and take another shot. And now I go to the background here or middle ground, zoom in again, focus, take another shot. And finally, I dial down the exposure and now I have everything. What's important, if you have such edges here, where the foreground drops right into the middle ground or background, you have to be careful with the focus stacking and sometimes you have to use a slightly higher f-stop to get both foreground and middle ground sharp, else the stacking will be very, very hard. But in this case, the foreground is far enough away and it works quite nicely. As you could see, taking such a focus stack sequence is very easy and if you know your equipment well and have done enough tests, you can do it even without live view, just using the focus scales on the lens. But I prefer to use live view because it gives me more precision. Also a little tip, especially in the beginning, always take one more photo than you think you need. Believe me, this will save you a lot of trouble in the end and redundant photos can easily be deleted later. So after taking those photos, the first step in post-processing after doing the pre-processing is then to combine the sharpest areas of all the photos. There are tools to do this automatically and even Photoshop has a built-in function to do focus stacking. But the results are often not very good and I have to double check the whole frame to make sure the stack wasn't screwed up. So, if I have to go in at 100% to check it, I can just do it myself and this way I have full control. So here I've already loaded three images into Photoshop. 
Those three images were shot a little later than the ones I showed in the video before. As the sun came up the life got even better so I repeated the process of focus stacking for those images with this light to basically get a very similar set of focused images. So for the background I even did a complete bracketed exposure sequence of three images here which I already blended so this is not part of this little tutorial we'll focus on the focus stacking but what this basically was it was three images a dark frame a middle frame and a bright frame and I simply blended it using some gradients and some luminosity masks so this was focused at the background here I think I focus it at uh, this cliff edge here and it gives me a very good sharpness throughout the frame nearly until the front I think if you look closely and compare it to the middle exposure let's look at this um, little flower here if we switch off the background you see that this middle exposure provides a little bit of additional detail it's not too much but with 50 megapixels every detail counts. So this middle exposure it was focused a little bit uh, closer. I think I focused it around at this area here. So this still gives me a very good sharpness also into the background. So I even have good sharpness in those areas and this will this I will use to remove a little bit of, of this lens flare here. So I used the hand technique which I showed in another tutorial video of mine where I show how to shoot into the sun. So using the hand to shield out the sun basically removes lens flares and in this case it's this flare here. So the middle exposure is basically also similar to the back exposure giving me a very good sharpness throughout the frame but since I focused a little closer to the foreground the sharpness goes a little more to this lower edge but if we look closely especially to those edges here those are still soft so I have the front exposure here which gives me the necessary sharpness for those areas very close to the lens so how do I now bring those three uh, exposures together focus stacking is very easy for this scene so I'll start by putting a mask on this middle exposure then I select a black brush with a edge that is a little soft but not too soft so I still want to have some definition and now I go in close here and with black and 100% I just paint in this area and I focus on the line where the sharpness changes so um, I try to find the transition from the front layer into the middle layer where the sharpness of the middle layer becomes sharper and I will draw along this line and here with those grasses I have to be a little careful this is the part where the foreground directly drops into the middle ground and uh, if I use the front exposure here or too much of the front exposure I lose a bit of detail so I'm careful here and will mostly draw here in those grasses and those lower parts and just along this edge here Here we begin to lose sharpness in the front layer so the line will go down here and, and somewhere like, like here. So what I now do I zoom out again and with Alt I can click into the mask and so we see the line I just drew and I'll fill the area be uh, within this boundaries which is closer to the lens which what 
closer than the area I defined by this line. And here you see also that it's often not just a linear line going through the image because this side, this slope um, falls away from the camera. So this is already farther away. So for this reason, I had to draw down this area here. So this is the first part. I brought in this area and now what I do, I activate the back layer and on this I'll put a black mask and now I again go in very close and this time I use a white brush. I can hold down shift and click on the mask to switch it on and off and I try to find again the line where the sharpness or where the transition of sharpness happens. And what you also see here, the middle exposure is a little brighter, so I'll drop in a curves layer and darken it so it better fits with the rest. So now I clean this up a bit and I'm basically done with the focus stack here. I can now flatten the image and continue with my normal post-processing. You might argue that for such an image it's easy, but for more complicated scenes with moving grasses or trees it will be much harder and you're right, with moving elements focus stacking can become a real pain. So I will usually mix in some photos taken with higher ISO and I also have to move to smaller apertures and parts of the image. In my start to finish tutorial for example I show a more extreme use case where I blend a total of 12 photos. This may sound a little bit like overkill but the result when printed at 60 or more inches speaks for itself. And this is maybe the biggest reason for all this effort with focus stacking. If you want to do large scale prints of an image, here every bit of additional detail will improve the presentation. If you only shoot for web, on the other hand, it doesn't matter at all, I would argue. When sizing down an image and sharpening for web, it mostly doesn't matter at which aperture it was taken. It often even doesn't matter if the image was sharp in the first place. But I personally always shoot with the intention for my photos to be printed large. And if you do too, focus stacking is a technique you should have in your repertoire. So I hope this was helpful. If so, feel free to leave a comment and if not, I'm always open to suggestions on how to improve my videos.